Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for coming around. I can see you, Crown Melody. <laughs> How are you today, Crown Melody? Happy weekend to you. Happy weekend to you and to your family. Thank you so much for coming around. How is wet today? <laughs> How is wet today, Crown Melody? Jadian's glory. Greetings to you, Jadian's glory. Greetings to you. Thank you so much for coming around. <laughs> if you are coming across the channel for the very first time, thank you so much for coming around. This is Holistic Wellness with Deborah, where we talk about everything that has to do with health, health talk, health matters, health G's, health matters arising, and health generally, okay? And today is not going to be an exception, please. If you are coming for the very first time, Feel free to like my videos, leave your comments, <laughs> share my videos, and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for coming around. And I wish you all a happy new month. Yes. <laughs> I wish you all a happy new month. Okay, so this month shall be a September to remember for every one of us in Jesus name. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming around. So in my recent episodes, we'll be talking about infertility, infertility, infertility. And today we are going to be talking about the positive alternatives to female infertility. So we've actually taken time to talk about the major causes of female infertility and even the male infertility. Okay, so, and we listed some things in my past live streams talking about the main causes of infertility in women. So today we are going to be talking about, we are going to be talking about the, the possible alternatives to infertility. Thank you so, so much. Thank you everyone for coming in. Thank you everyone. <laughs> It's nice having you around. So I would like to just briefly talk about the main causes of in female infertility, which we highlighted in my past episodes. And we talk about ovulation disorders. We talk about the damage or blockage of the fallopian tube, for example, be it partial blockage or complete blockage of the fallopian tube. Maybe there's an infection or there is a topic pregnancy that the the baby is not developing, the fetus is not developing in the uterus. That is another major problem. We have uterine malformations or abnormalities of the uterus. So these are examples. We also have uterine pathologies like fibroid, okay? So if, if a fibroid is blocking the womb, of course, if, if a fibroid is, is blocking the womb, then <laughs> no pregnancy, no pregnancy is going to take place if the fibroid is blocking the womb. We also have age too. We also have age too. <laughs> God, Melody, thank you. We also have age too. Age is also a major factor when it comes to fertility or infertility. Age is another major factor. Then we have ovary syndrome no we have ovary syndrome we have ovary syndrome so just a minute please i'm trying to get across with it with our guests okay hey evelyn lucky chidera tv thank you so much for coming around i'm doing very fine i'm doing very very fine <laughs> i'm doing very very fine happy week happy New month to you. Happy new month to your family. Happy new month to your family. I wish you a happy new month. Yes, today we are talking about women's health, fertility, infertility, and we want to discuss, we've discussed the main causes before. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Evelyn Shidera. We've discussed the main causes before. Then today we want to talk about the possible alternatives okay hey glorious home <laughs> good afternoon <Ma. laughs> thank you thank you so much for coming in glorious home evelyn lucky 
Crown Melody, JDN's Glory. Thank you for coming in and thank you for those amazing thumbs up. Thank you so much for coming in and thank you for those amazing thumbs up. Okay. So I was saying the major causes include ovulation disorders when a woman is not ovulating as expected of course if a woman doesn't ovulate that means she doesn't release egg and if a woman doesn't release egg then that means there's no egg to be fertilized okay okay yes yes lucky she there are yes crown melody is a very good friend i'm very sure she will do that we also have glorious home glorious home is also a very good friend a very supportive friend I'm sure she will also do that. So please feel free to feel free to relate with yourself. Okay, so we have our doctor in the building. Okay, okay, ma. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming in. We have our doctor in the building. <laughs> okay, so I dropped a link. I dropped a link. You could just scroll up a little, Dr. Adeyemo. You could just scroll up a little. You will see a particular link that I dropped. I can always drop it again for you. So that is the link you are going to jump on. <laughs> that is the link you are going to jump on, okay? Yeah, so we are going. We are having a doctor in our midst today. I love the topic. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I just dropped a link now, Dr. Adeyemo. You could jump on the link I just dropped now, okay? So like I said in, in our my recent episode, we talked about the major causes of infertility, like ovulation disorders, like blockage of the fallopian tube. Age is also a major factor when it comes to female infertility. We also have excessive weight gain, Yes, excessive weight gain, you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, even failure of the egg to mature properly. These are some of the causes of female infertility. Problems in the menstrual cycle too is another cause of female infertility. Thyroid problems too, thyroid and implantation failure too. So if the, if the developing zygote doesn't implant well, you know that fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. The, the, the sperm is going to swim to go and meet the egg in the fallopian tube. Fertilization will take place. And after that, the, the, the developing zygotes, after the fertilization has taken place, it moves down to the uterus. That is where the implantation takes place. It implants to the wall of the uterus and then that it, the, the fetus begins to develop. So when there is improper implantation when there is implantation failure this could also result into infertility and infertility is not it doesn't have to do with only females alone yes males too males too are involved so it's not a matter of it's only the woman no even the man too could be infertile so these are one of these are some of the main causes we discussed in the last episode okay 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 Okay, thank you so much for coming around, Dr. Adeyemo. <laughs> thank you. Your, your microphone, you are yet to put on your microphone. We can see you, but you are yet to put on your microphone. I think it's on now. Can you hear my voice? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> Good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon Good to afternoon. everyone in the house. Good afternoon. Thank you. So much. Yes, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. We're happy to have you around. We have Dr. Mrs. Damilola Adeyemo in the building. <laughs> yeah, she, she's not only a medical doctor, she's also a musician. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we have a musician doctor. I don't know how to combine it. I'm going to combine it later, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. She also plays musical instruments. She plays as mm. much. She sings very well. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for the accolade. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming around. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Thank you I very much, ma'am. To bring you more to you. Okay, so I, uh, I guess you are on motion. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll also, I'll also be seated. I'm in Lasset. Ah, okay, you're in Lasset. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll also be seated, but I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, all right. I hope okay. everyone can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. We can help right, hear right. you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you out of your busy yes, schedule. Thank you for finding time to honor the invitation. Thank you so, it's so much. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, I appreciate Thank the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we I can hand over to you since you said you are you are fine. So let me hand over yes, I to am. you. Yes, Very fair. All right, okay. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon to everyone in the house. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming on to our <laughs> blog. Thank you for always being with my presenter. God bless you all. So, like she said, we are discussing about alternatives to getting pregnant early and easily. Okay. Yes. So, I think she said she has discussed some other things about it earlier. Mm -hmm. So today, for those who want to achieve pregnancy, uh, I will be talking. Uh, I wouldn't know if you are. Hello. Hello. The the network. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I can hear you now. Uh, hello. Can you hear me now? I said yes. I don't yes. Know if there are questions on ground that I would answer. I don't know if there are questions on ground for me to answer. I should just talk about the alternative straight up. No, you can just start talking. So when if if anyone asks question, I, I I'll I'll tell you. I'll tell you, man. All right, man. Okay, okay man. <laughs> are you still hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I will be talking about will be basically for those who have um, ovarian issues maybe polycystic ovarian syndrome or they have some ovarian tumors or they have um like there's something we call premature ovarian failure okay okay there's premature ovarian failure there's polycystic ovary disease ovary syndrome ovarian syndrome and then we also have um, ovarian tumors either benign or malignant so for anyone having any of those issues for the premature ovarian failure, it's a it, it, it's at the extreme of the of the spectrum. If there's little or nothing one can do, but there are some trained gynecologists that those ones will need to see. There are some um, Oh, our guest is boofering. We can't hear her again. <laughs> we can't hear you. Hey, Suzanne Abotif, thank you so much for coming around. Happy Hello, new month. Am I back on the show? Yeah, you are back now. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was off. Okay. Yeah, I was talking about ovarian, ovarian issues first. You know, for fertility to take place, we have the male factor. We have the female factor. So I'm still on the female factor now before we go to the male factor. So for the female factor, there are we have the vagina, we have the ovaries, we have the fallopian tubes, we have the uterus itself, and they are at the at different levels of reproduction. And if there's any affectation to any of these structures, then there can be problem with fertility. So I want to start with that of the ovaries. Since the vagina is just a conduit, it's just a channel through which the child will come. Let's talk about the formation of the child first. So that's why I'm omitting the vagina and then going to the ovaries. When I'm through to the ovaries, then we'll talk about um, two bowel factors. That's the fallopian tube. Then we can now talk about the uterus. That's the womb itself. So for the ovaries, I was talking about three factors. There's what we call polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah, some people could have premature ovarian failure. You no, know, we have to revert of kidney failure. You have a liver failure. There's also ovarian failure. Actually, when it is premature, you know, if it is not premature, the person would have had one or two children before any issue of infertility and they may not bother. But when someone has not had an issue, that's a child or that's just one child and then can't take in again, and, they are, and the doctors are able to trace it down to um, the ovaries and that the ovaries are no longer getting stimulated, they are failed, the premature ovarian failure. The hormones are okay, 
the luteinizing hormone is fine, follicle stimulating hormone, no problem, progesterone is at the normal level, and everything is fine at the hormonal level. The person does a test called hormonal analysis and everything is good. But the ovaries is, are not releasing any eggs, they are not getting stimulated, it's just that they are now just there structurally, but no function. That's premature mm -hmm. ovarian failure, and that's at the end of the spectrum. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one, and it's not a very general, it's not a very common, it's not commonplace um, diagnosis. I just mentioned it so that we can know about it, but I mentioned it to also keep it, then go to the more common ones. So for poly, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, there is hope, even though it's a difficult diagnosis to, to, come, to, to get treated, but people have had it, and at the end of the day, they've had treatment and they've been able to take it. So what such people will do is to get to know their sugar level, get it treated, and then all those other side effects of a polycystic ovarian syndrome, the acne, the exotism, those are not oh, the no, issues no. now. So when the person, when that affected individual or the patient does the hormonal profile test and the particular affected hormone is treated, maybe the patient is given um, is given uh, the supplement or is given uh, hormonal replacement, person, and there's a balance in the level of the hormone, the person can take in. So those ones are still compliable or compliant rather with um, natural pregnancy. But for those who have tried, maybe they have PCOS or they have um, um, PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome or they have um, ovarian tumors. And then, you know, we have to ovaries. God is magnanimous. Those things that are very important to the human body, either men or women, it gives us double of them. Our eyes are double, our kidneys are double, the ovaries are double, the breasts are double, the testicles are double. So if it's an ovarian issue and it's affecting just one of the ovaries, if it is treated, maybe an ovarectomy is done or an S lap to, to drain the cyst, if it's a very big cyst and it is not regressing. So the other um, ovary can take care of that and the person can still ovulate and then take in. So uh, I'm just starting like from the edge of the cake before we get to the main part of the cake. So those ones are still compliant with um, natural um, cystis. You can still take in a, a cheap conception on your own. All you need to do is to see a gynecologist, the treatment is done, and then you are given the time to rest to get yourself back and you go for follicle, you go for um you go to check if your cycle is a is an ovulatory one. There's a test that is done, it is scanning, it is it, it it's an ultrasound test. They just monitor like a follicle monitoring. They monitor you do it through the vagina, they monitor the folic the ovaries. Is there any dominant follicle in any of the ovaries? You keep monitoring it till it gets extruded, okay? And then the person is counseled on the ovulation period, when to meet the husband, when to have sex, and then how to conceive. Those ones are still compliant with natural, normal pregnancy. But if everything has been done, and then you've checked your hormones, you've seen the gynecologist, they've monitored your cycle, it's an ovulatory one, and yet pregnancy is not coming, then back to where we are today. That's what brings us in. Maybe someone has um, just one to block or both tubes or the sperm count is low. That's why now moving to the male factor now. Or there's even azospam here. There's no sperm in the semen. Just mm -hmm. semen being released, no sperm at all. Then what mm -hmm. do we do? The Bible counsels against divorce. And even putting religion aside, if that partner or that spouse of yours is someone that's actually your friend, someone you love, that you married not just for the sake of um, um, giving birth or having kids, you know that this is not the person I can leave just because the sperm count is low or because we're not able to achieve conception in good time. You want to see the matter, to, you want to see to the end of the matter, you want to try to um, achieve solution. So what can we do? That's why we're here now this afternoon. What are the alternatives we have to normal conception? You know, if there's um, normal conception and the person able to take in or to achieve pregnancy, then there will be no need for alternatives. But after we've tried our best, we've um, gone to see the gynecologist, we've taken hormonal supplements, we've taken um, vitamins and all the other things that we have been taught on the channel to take to help us achieve pregnancy, and then we're still not achieving pregnancy. What do we now do? Okay. Let me start with um, the case of IUI that we call intrauterine insemination. Intrauterine insemination. 
a woman has gone to do hysterosapigography and she has discovered that um she has frozen pelvis or uh tubes are blocked both tubes and she's ovulating she has done she has gone for follicular folliculometry she has gone for follicular monitoring and they've told her that both ovaries are fine they've been releasing eggs and yet she's not assuming pregnancy so the gynecologist said okay let's go for a further test and then she does this sono hsg or she does the actual um hysterosapigography and they told her sorry madam both tubes are blocked what can she do the husband is fine the sperm count is okay and then everything is good just that she's menstruating normally there are there are no menstrual issues what can she do she can Oh, you are muted, Dr. Adeyemo. Please, Ma, you are muted. Okay, Ma. Hello, Ma. Am I back on? Okay. Yes. Okay, ma. yeah. I said, so in the case of um, a good sperm count, no male factor, there, there's no menstrual problem, there's no hormonal issue, just that the tubes are blocked, so there's no part for uh fertilization to take place the egg is released but it's not it's, it's even being picked by the fimbre of the fallopian tubes but there's no path for it to take into the corner end of the womb for fertilization to take place so what we can do for such a woman she's ovulating and the sperm, the husband's sperms are fine in number in motility in their morphology everything is good so we can just pick the husband's um, sperm prepare them mature them like there's, there's what they is done to prepare those um, stamps and they are now placed within the woman's womb since it's the pathway that's the issue the path for the stamps to pass through the fallopian tubes into the womb so we by we bypass it's just like maybe there's traffic in a part of the road and then we'll go to take another path where we're still going we're able to get there so where we want to get is the final end of the womb so we can just pick help the woman pick her head since it's releasing eggs normally, it's not a problem. We pick our eggs, then the oven stamps are taken also and they are prepared. They are boosted, they are prepared, they are prepared for that um, intrauterine insemination. So at that part of the womb, the sperm is dropped there and then that is inseminated. That's where the, the, the word insemination comes from. The sperm is dropped at that part and then there's fertilization. So that's one of the alternatives we have. Do we understand? Yes, but is it is while the the fertilized egg is going to be dropped, is it going to be through operation to the woman's operation? It's not going to be a true operation. I think it is the part is through the it, it is intravaginal. There are okay, sophisticated okay. instruments that are used for those things. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm not a gynecologist. I've not seen one being done. I've just heard about okay. this, and I'm sorry, I've not had issues about uh, infertility, so I've not had one done on me either. Do okay. we understand? But it's it's not a difficult procedure. Many people have done it, and very luckily too, it's a procedure that even at one uh, at one demonstration, when you do it just at a time, at an episode, the woman can achieve them. Um, pregnancy so that's one of the alternatives we have for okay. um, as an alternative for conception or for achieving pregnancy another very common one that we've all heard about that almost everybody knows about is the um, IVF I know many of us have heard about it so that one apart from the woman having the woman may not even have blocked tubes or anything there may also be issues with male factor. There may be azospermia or uh, the low sperm count that we know, the hypospermia. So this, maybe the count is not enough or the motility is not enough or the morphology is bad and they've tried over and over to achieve normal, natural pregnancy and it is not so impossible. There's no need to waste too much time, especially when the woman is still below 35 years because when the woman is above 35, it is going to be difficult using her own eggs so we don't want to waste time. Yes, maybe she would have to look for an egg donor. So if you want the child to be truly yours and that of your husband, no, they would have taken the husband's, um, they know the husband's count, that it is low. They would have given supplements. They would have tried to boost up the sperm. And when it is at the level that the gynecologist or the urologist that is monitoring wants, they prepare the woman also. 
if she's below 35, I think that five is the cutoff, her uh, eggs will be used. But if she's getting older, she's now in the elderly group, maybe above 40, she'll have to look for an egg donor. So what you have to do, do quick. So once mm -hmm. you know about the alternative, prayerfully, and God is leading us to do it, and the money is prepared, everything is fine, you can go ahead to do it. Exactly. That one is um, external. There are so many factors, many investigations to be conducted. The woman is prepared. And I've seen many, because I'm a radiologist in training. You just see the right um, pregnancy achieved through IVF or assisted. The, the, those, all these things we are discussing about, they call them ARTs, assisted mm -hmm. reproductive techniques. Mm -hmm. So there yes. are many AAF, assisted reproductive techniques. Or some, some of the time we just write ART on the scan form for the woman. So you know that this is a special um, pregnancy, and usually they are elderly. You know, they would have tried many other means to achieve natural pregnancy, and then time would have been gone. So rather than wasting time, once the, facil the facilities are now almost everywhere, even in Nigeria or any country where you are joining us from, you can find out facilities are everywhere. ART is now becoming commonplace. It was before that it was like um, highfalutin or esoteric. It's now almost normal. Like when you are pregnant and you are putting on your abaya or your or your pregnancy outfit, nobody will see it on your forehead that ah, this pregnancy <laughs> is a natural one or, or this one you will okay. nobody will add ART on your forehead or IVF on your forehead. So it's just for God to answer one's prayers because. I know some people they, they, they mix up sentiments or religious yeah. um, religious sentiments with this. There was someone I was speaking with her, she was like at the time my husband was ready and the money was there, money wasn't the issue. She was the one discouraging the husband that let's wait for what God will do. I'm like, who does this one? It's not Satan. It's God that has given the gynecologist, the urologist, the the every <laughs> professional involved, the nurses. The medical laboratory exactly. scientists is going to be exactly. giving them wisdom to bring about exactly. this. And when the child is conceived, this is still God. Many people have done in, uh, this IVF and them in vitro fertilization, and it has not been successful. I know a woman that did it three times. But I'm not saying that God is punishing her, but I'm just saying that for every successful pregnancy, whether it is natural or artificial, or through, not that the pregnancy is artificial itself, whether the pregnancy is achieved naturally or through an assisted reproductive technique, IUI, IVF, God is still involved because it is God that gives children. If the fertilization does not take place, pregnancy cannot come. So it is God that makes the fertilization possible, puts the heart in that um, embryo or that zygote before it even becomes an embryo, and then the heart starts kicking as early as four weeks. So there's no um, artificial child. <laughs> it's only in the malls that we can get a, a teddy bear or a doll. Those are the artificial ones. But one that has a a, a beating heart, one that has a cranial, a, a cranium, a central nervous system, and then the spine is developing, and then the heart starts forming, and then we also have the um the the the, the gastrointestinal system. Everything God put them there, then that means God is involved. So for the IVF, back to it, and then going away from the digressions. Now, the man is prepared. The woman is also prepared. It's not something that we can just jump at. It, the, the, you make up your mind. You prepare yourself emotionally, prepare yourself even spiritually. Tell God to be involved at the very onset of the technique. And then tell your husband, your husband is in support. There's, uh, there are forms to sign. There are investigations to do. The blood level, the the holistic well-being of the woman is there. Our, our, our emotions are fine because the emotions and the hormones, are they go hand in hand. Once there's, a, if there's an issue to the emotions, the hormones still go away. So the woman is emotionally prepared. She's psychologically prepared for what she wants to do. She knows what she wants to do. There are no distractions. Then financially, too, the finance is there. Go to the professionals, not just um, a quack person that's looking for money, that's just putting up structures. You know, you know the, their success would have spoken for them. Not that this um, facility, they've achieved many successes in IVFs. People direct you, tell your spouse, tell your pastors, everybody that will give you support. Get the money ready. You do your, PC, your full block count. They do your hormonal profile, many tests, and then you are ready. A date is picked. Also, if they, you know it's one or two things, there may be no male factor. If the male factor is fine, the spam count, everything is good, then it is just taken and then boosted, and there are some other things they add to it to, to make it, you know, it's, it's not the natural way now. They are introducing it artificially. So they know what to do to, to, to prepare that um, spam and then to get it boosted, to get it ready for what is to be done. Then the woman is also prepared. Her cycle is well understood. 
the time for the eggs to be released, they are, they are monitored. The dominant follicles are followed avidly. Then when the eggs are extruded, they are harvested. After the harvesting of the eggs, and then the sperms are also already prepared, boosted, then the fertilization is achieved outside the womb. In vitro, that's the meaning of the in vitro. In vitro means outside of the body. Then they are, the, fatal, the, the zygote that is formed is also monitored. When it just becomes an embryo, then the, there is a date that is chosen for the transplant of that um, zygote that is fertilized externally or out of the body or in vitro. And it is now <laughs> placed in the womb. You understand? It is introduced or transferred. I think they use the word transfer. Because yeah. some of those, those terms, we see the there is a fertilization date and there's also a transfer date. It's usually a two-week interval. So after two weeks, after the egg, you can see that everything is fine. Some usually they don't use an ovum, that's an egg. They use about two or three, sometimes four, because there may be issues with one. So at the time of transfer, the four are transferred, the viable ones, the ones that are viable, they keep monitoring for viability. So if about three or four out of the five that were fertilized um, in vitro are uh, doing fine, then there's a day for transfer, the woman is prepared, everything is good, all the professionals are on ground, blood pressure monitored, everything, then the transfer is done, and the woman is on complete bed rest. So, mm. there are terminologies that I don't want to bother you with, so there's, exactly. there's <laughs> yes, when the transfer is done, I don't know how, I've been trying in my head to break them into the layman term, when the transfer is done, the woman is on complete bed rest, and she's still being monitored. Whatever okay. would have been done outside, you know, there is there's a process of embryogenesis. There's something that's supposed to happen on day one, on day two, on day three. So there are things the gynecologist is watching out for, you understand? So when those uh, activities are going on normally, then there's a success. So at the second week, they look, just after the transfer day, the next day, they keep monitoring. And they keep doing ultrasound. Now that the transfer has been done, the zygote is now in vivo, no longer in vitro. So there's a monitoring that is done for the transferred zygotes. Usually there are more than one. Not all, sometimes not all the zygotes that are transferred survive, but usually they survive. Maybe just one regression, and then maybe three out of four may survive. Sometimes two out of three, and sometimes the whole three. So then the woman is keep, keeps gets monitored, gets monitored. They they, they feed that um parenterally. Usually there are no, there is nothing to disturb that process. So she's fed parenterally, the, the zygotes are monitored, and when we can now see signs of implantation within our womb, we are happy that there is success, then we keep monitoring those zygotes, those zygotes, and there's um, the process of placenta formation. When that is done and then the babies are fine, it's now begin to mimic natural conception. Everything is good. Um, ultrasound is being done. Those babies are monitored. Pregnancy is achieved. That's another method. That's the IVF. Another very uncommon method that um, people don't want to talk about, but that's also good, especially for those who are elderly, maybe have tried the IVF or IUI severally and then there's no success, is the adoption. But that is kind of technical and then um, it has to be with the consent of both parties. I mean, the two spouse, the couple, not that uh, my wife wants it and my husband does not want it or my husband wants it and the wife is feeling somehow about it. That's another way, especially when it's a baby that is being adopted, that before that child achieves the social smile, before the child achieves the developmental milestone, sees the parents as is or as. So there's little or no difference other than emotional issues that you yourself would have dealt with. You would have seen that child as yours, accepted the child as yours. On the part of the child, there are no much issues. Having no emotions yet, just coming into the world, mm -hmm. I accept if it's an older child, maybe a toddler or an early child or, or, or being in the early stage of childhood or early school year child, you know, those those things are broken into ages from zero to yes. um, 11 yes. months. They're called infants. Yes. Then, then the toddlers about um, one to three or four. Yes. Then the early yes. preschool, maybe four to six. Then the late preschool, before you now talk of early teenage and other ones. So it depends on the age of the child that is adopted. So it's better to adopt the very younger children that see you as theirs. So they, they, they come, uh, once there's a um, golden moon, 
and there's um, noodles, and there are <laughs> peanut butter, and there's um, dapa, there are kitty bags, there's chocolate. Socks, everything is there. <laughs> chocolate and ice cream. It, the child does not want to know whether it's an injured that brought it or anybody that provides the meal, provides exactly. the, children, the emotional care, provides the social care. That's the person that the child sees as ease or a parent. So it's a very good alternative, except there, there, there may be need for relocation and some other things. So people are not be saying, ah, we didn't see this woman get pregnant. How come she has a baby? Or how come she has a toddler or things like that? So those factors, there are, there are processes, due processes. There are also the legal components to it. Have to go to the registry for the government, get everything registered. But aside those, I don't see anything big to it because the comfort we get later, that's you know, that ability to take care of a child as a parent, that's the joy, that's the fulfillment, and that's what the woman or the spouse or the couple is looking for. So once the child once even if it's an older child, it depends on, on what the family wants. A child to call your own, a child to take care of. A child exactly. to train, a, an arrow in the hand of God that you can say, who are the parents of this child? You understand? And when the papers are done, you, you become the parents both biologically, socially, in every way. So that's another alternative that um, we can have to achieve um, pregnancy. So the assisted reproductive techniques are more, apart from the IUI, apart from the IVF, sometimes if it's just the... Um, if it's just sometimes the tubes are not totally blocked, what we have may just be hydrosapping. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but if, if it is bilateral, as in if it's affecting both sides, there's what we call a prosapin hydro that's when we call it hydrosapinges. So, but if it is just um partial blockage from hydrosapin means there's water in the fallopian tube, so it is swollen. And when it is swollen, the mural part that's the wall part becomes very thickened. So the lumen, that's the passage, that's the, what I call it, hole within it. It's like a tube, like a, like a very tiny tube, like even smaller than spaghetti, it's, it's, it's in micrometers. So wow. if the mural part, the wall part of that tube is thickened because there's water in it, the, the lumen, that's the, what's, what, what other word can I use? That? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the we have to say, <laughs> yeah, the conduit of that um, tube. You know, that's why we call it fallopian tube. It's actually a tube. There's a human yeah. within it. So if there's an um, increase, maybe from um, sometimes it's not just water that's within it. It might be an infection, like an ascending infection, starting as um all this um pelvic inflammatory disease. Then it affects the womb itself. Then it ascends again, affecting the fallopian tube. So it may not just be water. It may be chronic inflammation that will make it there will be healing this time then there will be infect, infection again there's healing there's infection it usually affects the wayward people those who have um, multiple sexual partners so we are concerned also so that this may be just knowledge and it may also be for solution so if it's just for knowledge it's it's an opportunity for us to know that it's better to have a stable partner but if it's just is for solution the deed has been done what can we do we can get that um inflammation treated but the Bad news about that is that many times it's a cold infection. There is no fever, there are no bloating, there's no pain. So we don't even know anything is going on until there's time, it's time for conception, it's time to achieve pregnancy, and then there's no pregnancy. So after conducting several investigations, several tests, then you get to know that ah, there's a, problem, a, a frozen pelvis or a, a, a pelvic inflammatory disease that has ascended even up to the level of the fallopian tubes. So what can we do? If it's a partial I want to relocate, sir. The noise of the rain will not disturb me so much. I don't know if it's affecting us too much. Hello? <laughs> There's no problem. Very well. Okay, so yeah. this is from sapingitis, and there's a partial blockage, or is it from hydrosapingitis, and there's a partial blockage. If there's water in the tube, or there's chronic inflammation, and the tube is not totally blocked, there's all we can do. We thought it's like a kind of flushing. That's the layman term I can use in my head. So we get um, purified water, sterile water. The woman is put in a totally position that you're lying on your back with your legs up, okay? As if someone wants to give birth. That position they put a woman that wants to give birth. So we assess the internal us. That's the opening of the womb with all our instruments. I don't want to bother you with that. So your instruments are prepared. The water, the sterile water to be used. 
or a contrast agent. Sometimes it's a contrast agent, not just the water that that is used. So we already know the diagnosis. It's a partial blockage, maybe in one tube or in both tubes. So our contrast medium or our sterile water is prepared. In a very, um, we use a tube or we use a syringe that is under high pressure. So when we assess the mouth, let me call it that way, of the womb, that's the opening into the womb, that's the cervical of. Then, fixing our instrument there, our syringe that is under high pressure is already with us. We already assured the woman to give her um, muscle relaxant drugs already, all those interventions that have been done. Yes, assure, yes. We assure her that the pain is not going to be so much, just discomforting. Then we flush those debris or those um, polar, uh, like, um, I can just call them debris. Materials that are partially blocking the tube, the lumen of that fallopian tube or both fallopian tubes. So when we push in that contrast medium or that sterile fluid water under high pressure, you know the tube has a very small diameter, a very small lumen. So when it's, it's just like you trying to blow a balloon very heavily, you know it will it will it will balloon out. So those dead brigades on the way, under air pressure, they give way. Okay. Yeah. So at that time, we told the woman to monitor our ovulation. We monitor our, 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 poly, our, our ovaries too. Any egg that is released, that is, you don't want to, you don't want to joke with it. Once the frame break picks it, at that time, she must have um, copulation or set coitus at uh, ovulation period. It can also assist. While it, uh, it that, this one is a mixture of both natural and then. Um, assisted the productive technique because eventually the pregnancy will be achieved through the natural route. But if we don't clear that debris out of the way, if we don't do that flushing, it may that literally the narrowing of the lumen may not allow the egg to have free passage. And if the egg does okay. not have free passage to get to the corner end of the tube or of the womb, <laughs> there may be no um um there may be no pregnancy may not be achieved or there may be no pregnancy. There may be no pregnancy. So those okay. are the um once that we talk about, I can see my time. I'm, I've spent almost for two minutes already. I don't know if there are <laughs> questions I want to ask, or if there's a type of assistant with the technique I've omitted that somebody wants to ask about. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, ma. So, what about surrogacy? What will you say about surrogacy? Yes, why did I omit that? It's also one of the <laughs> well, that's for those who have. Thank you. That's why I said, let me, let me allow others to assist me by mm -hmm. asking questions. Surrogacy is for those, you know, it, 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 it's complicated. There are some people that have no issues. And I just want to keep fit. I don't want anything to happen to my body. Since it's the temple of God, I want to keep it holy or whatever. Or whatever their sentiments may be. Or I want to keep my shape. I'm hourglass and things like that. And my husband is going head over heels because of my shape. And I want it to remain like that. Or there are people who don't have all those, um, all those side palliative sentiments who cannot carry their pregnancy to term. Not that they don't get pregnant, but maybe along the line, once the child, once the um, fetus gets to about four or five months, some even lower, three four months, they have a an abortion. Not a, a willful abortion, not one that they do themselves. Yes. So not yes. a voluntary termination of pregnancy, but miscarriage, that what we call miscarriage in our late time. And they've tried this over and over. The first pregnancy miscarriage, second pregnancy miscarriage, and they now got to the sister that they told them that their womb is not able to carry the pregnancy to term. Some it is because of cervical incompetence. I don't know if you've heard about that. Their service is not competent enough. They just give yeah. the, the service is supposed to remain closed till yes. pregnancy is over. So for them, for those who have cervical incompetence, the service does this way. It yes. opens and then. The amniotic fluid that is keeping the child um, healthy, that's keeping the child in place, keeping the child alive, just gets wasted. They see the water. If they, so, you know, like someone that's going in, that's in labor or that's going to the hospital to give birth, you expect them to see water because at that time the child is good enough to go. But for those who have cervical incompetence, the child is not yet good to go at all. In fact, the child is still developing. Still at the, some of them have not even gotten to the viability age so that they can't even be salvaged. And then they see their water. The boss. The water busts in the layman language and everything is gone. The child has to be excluded or expelled and the child cannot make it because the, the child is not yet fit to come to the world. So for those who have cervical incompetence or who want to keep their shape or who there are some uterine anomalies. There is uterine didelvis, 
many of them that the uterus is uh, the uterus that's the womb is having um a shape that cannot keep a child or is divided into two some people don't even have a uterus do you know wow. some people come into the world and they don't have a uterus at all they don't have a womb not that they terminated the pregnancy and the doctor removed it all. that's how god created them they have a vagina and then the vagina is ending as an as a closed tube it's just ending like that there's no womb so for those mm -hmm. who like who are like that their hormones are okay they have their tube they have everything in fine everything is fine but there's no room to carry the child so that's why i said there are so many reasons for surrogacy apart from the reason of i want to keep my body fit or cervical incompetence there are those that have uterine anomalies that's womb anomalies either the shape is not good enough cannot stretch to accommodate the child or the uterus is naturally that's the way they were born they have so, a so, so anomaly that just like getting someone to carry the pregnancy yeah body. so they can get a woman who is fit who has given birth before and who does not mind maybe a single lady or a married woman that will go through the legal means put hands to book you understand what i'm saying that will not come later to come and say ah this child is mine to carry the pregnancy for them and then the woman is paid or it can even be a favor Maybe a younger sister is thinking, why is my sister going through this? And I have had my own children. Maybe I've completed yes. my family. Let me help my other sister. So the fact mm -hmm. is that somebody, either paid or not paid, either a close relation or a distant person, a woman that is fit, that, has a, that does not have any uterine anomaly, is willing mm -hmm. or is willing to carry the child on behalf of the woman that's having issues, the pregnancy. So either the person is paid or not, all those terms are, there will be terms and conditions. Let me just leave it at that. So surrogacy yes. is one key one that I shouldn't have forgotten. I just knew something is amiss. That's why I cried out for help. That. Let me let me allow me to the question. Maybe the, I don't know the that the, 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 the techniques are not limited to IUI and then yeah. IVF yeah. alone. Yes, wow. Yes. Thank, Thank you very so, much. So much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Adeyemo. Someone is saying, how common is surrogacy, especially in Nigeria? And how can how one common? How common is surrogacy? Uh, how okay. common surrogacy? I can hear especially you. Especially yes, in Nigeria. And how can okay. one find one? How can one find All this? Right. Surrogate mother? <laughs> a surrogate mother. There are agencies. <laughs> That's the okay. work they do. Yes, there are agencies. You just keep, especially on the highlands, or I'm sorry, I can't find my other, other earpiece. No, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. All right. So, Either on the highland or in highbrow areas of um, Lagos, like um, Magodo, Ikeja, Potakot, Abuja, it's now the it's 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 now something commonplace. You can business. just browse online. <laughs> yeah, it's not even just business. It's business actually because you get your money, you get paid. I mean, the professionals get paid; they get their yes. money. But lives are also ebb. People are also mm -hmm. uh, smi smiles are put on people's faces. Do you understand? People get to smile yeah. that ah, I cannot. You know, your money, I have much there. I can't turn into a child. You still have to channel it through a course. Some, somebody has to help you. There are, so it's not difficult at all. There are agencies. So I guess it's not very common, but it's becoming more common. At least I even saw a movie, Mama Drama. So for, for people to conceptualize this into movies and to act it out, it means it has been done. You know, many of those movies are partly fiction and partly based on true life and events. So yes. for it to be conceptualized into movies to be acted at, then I, I was happy when I saw the movie that things are becoming commonplace. So it's, it's getting commonplace. It's not very common, but it's becoming more common than before. And before it was seen like a taboo that what happens to you? Are you not a woman yourself? Are you not complete? How will you be telling a woman to tell her? Uh, uh, no, no, no. So there are legal processes to it now. The woman signs a deal. I can't breach that deal. That this child, you are just like a carriage. You are not going to come after later and then press a suit that uh, this child is mine or anything. So there are legal um, components to it. It's now becoming more common. It's not as very. It's not very common like the normal pregnancy, but it's becoming more common. I even linked one of our. I I, I would I want to mention names because I don't have my facts. It's just an allegation. I learned that one of our actresses that was what she did. So if you have the money and you go to approach those agencies that do it and your reasons are valid and you can whether it's your own sibling or a close person once there's a surrogate surrogacy can be done okay okay thank you thank you so much dr day rain is falling you are in the hospital you still created time 
to honor the invitation. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. Amen. Thank you so so much. So you can go offline. I'll just I'll just summarize all you've said so that we don't consume so much of your data. <laughs> ah no, it's not a problem. It's a pleasure. Okay, are there no more questions? No, no, there are no questions again. All right. There are no you. questions again. Thanks a million times. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so look, today I want to talk about ART, that is assisted reproductive techniques. She mentioned IUI, that is intrauterine insemination. She mentioned IVF, that is in vitro fertilization. The egg will be fertilized outside the woman's body. And she, you know, we also have intracytoplasmic injection, injection too, could be taken. So the bottom line is this the the older you are becoming the lesser the success rate so when one is getting to what is IRT? <laughs> oh someone is asking what is art art is assisted reproductive techniques everyday matters i understand she she's at work she came a little bit late so art is assisted reproductive techniques and we have iui that is intrauterine insemination we have IVF. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do a short video on this. I'll just summarize everything we said for the sake of those who missed the video. And by the way, I'm going to be premiering this video tomorrow. So <laughs> every day matters. I'm going to be premiering this same video tomorrow by 1 p.m. Europe time. So if you have a chance, you can come around tomorrow and watch the video again. 1 p.m. Europe time tomorrow. So she mentioned IUI, IVF. And like I was saying, the rate of success of these techniques has to do with one's age. So if a woman is getting to 45, she's getting to 40, I think we should put faith aside and start trying these techniques. You understand? Because anything less than 35, you achieve a greater success, about 40 to 50% success. Getting to 35 to 37 years, the success rate begins to drop. It drops to like 35%. And then getting to 38 to 40 years, it drops like 25%. Getting to 41 to 42 years, 15%. 43 years is already 7%. So if one is having issues with infertility, the earlier the better to start trying this ART, assisted reproductive techniques, when a woman is infertile or when you know when one is having issues with infertility. Okay, so she also mentioned medications. The simple ones can be treated with medications, okay? Maybe the woman has infection, and that is why she can't take in. That one can be treated with medication. But when it's coming to blockage of fallopian tube, maybe there's a fibroid, of course, the fibroid is the one blocking the fallopian tube. It has to be removed. So when there's problem with the ovaries, then the ALTs would come in. Okay. <laughs> Everything matters. Say one hour premiere. Yes, I'm going to premiere it tomorrow because quite a lot of people are not are not conversant with the Friday prayer. My Friday, today's live stream. They're always like, oh, El Listing Quenness is always live on Saturday. So a lot of people are not here today. So I'll be premiering it tomorrow for the sake of those who couldn't meet up today so that they could also get to know what we talked about today. So thank you so much for coming around. Thank you for the likes. <laughs> if you have any comments, you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section, okay? Thanks also for this powerful discussion. Thank you, Pound Melody. <laughs> so if you have any question, please leave it in the comment section. And if you would like to share this video, you can also share it. <laughs> Super boss, thank you so much for coming around. Yes, I'm doing good. I'm rounding up already, okay? <laughs> I'm rounding up already. So I'm going to pay me it tomorrow. So if you just watch this video, don't forget to like. If you have any question, you can leave your comment, your question in the comment section. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, found -bye. melody. So if you also feel like sharing, you could share and as a matter of fact, I'm going to be putting it on private now so that tomorrow I will set it for premiere tomorrow. And then if you are watching for the very first time, please try to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell so that you could get a lot of doses from this channel. <laughs> a lot of doses from this channel. Thank you so much for coming around. If you also like to support this channel, financially you could press that join button and you'll be led accordingly thank you for coming around 
I wish you a splendid September. Yeah, I wish you a September to remember. I'm going to be premiering this video tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming around. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Wonderful weekend. Thank you for coming. Every day matters. Super Bowls. Thank you for coming. Crown Melody. Thank you for coming. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Evelyn Lucky. Thank you for coming. Glorious Home. Fantastic FA. Thank you, Suzanne Abertives. Thank you, Evelyn Lucky Chidera TV. Fantastic FA, Erica B TV. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our guest, our doctor, Dr. Adeye Modami Lola. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. JD and Glory, thank you for coming around. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. I wish you a happy weekend. <laughs> I wish you all a happy weekend. Thank you for coming. Take care of yourselves. Take care of yourself. Take care and bye for now. Bye for now. Have a beautiful weekend. And you too, have a beautiful weekend. <laughs> have a beautiful weekend. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.